Before anything made sense, there was only chaos. People thought fire, water, air and earth were all that existed. They had no idea what the universe was made of. From the fire of stars came tiny building blocks, elements, that make up everything. You, me, mountains, machines. But for thousands of years, nobody knew what they were or how many existed. What if you had a code that could unlock every single thing in the world? A chart, not of names and numbers, but of powers, predicting things that hadn't even been discovered yet. One chart holds it all. It fuels rockets, cures diseases, builds your phone, even destroys cities. And it all started with one man who saw the pattern no one else could. This is the story of the most powerful chart ever created. Hundreds of years ago, people called alchemists believed they could turn metal into gold. They weren't scientists, more like magical experimenters. They didn't know what elements were, but they knew something was hidden in matter. In 1789, Antoine Lavoisier started making the first real list of elements. He said, let's write down only substances we can't break down. It was the first big step toward order, but his list only 33 elements, and some were wrong. Then came John Dalton. He said every element is made of its own tiny ball, an atom. His idea was simple but huge. Matter was made of pieces too small to see. He even gave atoms weights. But what could you do with a bunch of numbers? In 1817, a man named Doberiner noticed something weird. When he grouped elements in threes, the middle one had a weight right between the others. He called them triads. No one understood. Was it a trick or a clue? In 1862, Alexandre de Chancourtois wrapped the elements around a cylinder. He said the pattern was spiral. He found a rhythm, but published it in a geology journal. No one paid attention. John Newlands tried something new. He said, every eighth element acts the same, like music notes. He called it the law of octaves. But when he presented it, scientists laughed at him. They thought it was a joke. By the 1860s, there were over 60 known elements, but no one knew how to organize them. Every chart failed. People were close, but the code was still locked. Everyone was guessing, but someone was about to see it. A man with wild hair, a dream, and a deck of element cards. He wasn't just building a chart, he was about to build a key. Dmitri Mendeleev didn't plan to become famous. He was poor, sick as a child, and his mother rode a horse across Russia just to get him into school. But he was obsessed with order, and he hated chaos. When he looked at the elements, he saw what others missed. The world wasn't random, it was hiding a pattern. He wrote every known element on a separate card. Then he played a kind of solitaire, lining them up by weight, then by behavior, then shifting them again. For days, he didn't sleep. He said the pattern finally came to him in a dream. Mendeleev realized something shocking. Some elements were missing. Instead of forcing them in, he left blank spaces in his table. Everyone else had tried to fit what they had. He built a table for what didn't exist yet. It was a huge gamble. He didn't just leave blanks, he guessed what the missing elements would be like. He gave them temporary names like Ica Aluminum and described their weight, density and how they would react. No one had ever done that. He was using a table to describe things that hadn't even been found. 
When he showed his table, many scientists laughed. They didn't believe in missing elements. Some said he had lost his mind. But Mendeleev didn't back down because he knew something they didn't. Six years later, a new metal was discovered, gallium. Its weight, its color, its melting point, everything matched Mendeleev's prediction. Suddenly, his blank space was real. The science world went silent. More elements followed, exactly where Mendeleev said they would be. It wasn't luck, it wasn't a guess. He had cracked the code of matter, and now everyone believed it. Mendeleev didn't just organize elements. He built a table that could see the future. A chart that revealed the past, explained the present, and predicted what came next. The table had proved itself, but the fight to perfect it was just beginning. Mendeleev's table amazed the world, but it had problems no one could solve. Some elements didn't fit the pattern, like iodine, which was lighter than tellurium, but came after it. People were whispering, was the table wrong? In 1913, a brilliant 26-year-old named Henry Mosley asked a new question. What if we ordered elements by something else, not weight, but the number of protons in the nucleus? He built a machine to find that number using X-rays. What he discovered would change the table forever. He called it the atomic number, the number of protons in each atom. Suddenly, everything clicked. Even the weird gaps made sense. Mosley's new order proved stronger than Mendeleev's weights, and now the table was almost unbreakable. Just a year later, war broke out. Mosley joined the army and died in battle, a young genius lost forever. Scientists everywhere were shocked. One said, we lost a mind that could have won a Nobel Prize, maybe two. Around the same time, scientists found something strange in the air. Gases that didn't react, didn't bond, didn't do anything. They called them noble gases, helium, neon, argon. There was no place for them in Mendeleev's table until now. A new column was added, group 18. The table bent and reshaped itself again, like a living thing. More gaps were filled, but the biggest change was still coming, from deep inside the atom. In the 1940s, the atom was split, and new elements started appearing from nuclear labs. But they didn't fit anywhere. Chemist Glenn Seaborg proposed something wild, move them off the table completely. He created two new rows, the lanthanides and the actinides. Over decades, the table bent, shifted and stretched, but it never broke. It could handle anything, from X-rays to nuclear weapons. It had become the ultimate map of matter, and it still had space for more. You don't just use the periodic table, you are the periodic table. The oxygen you breathe, the calcium in your bones, the iron in your blood, they all came from this chart. These aren't just symbols, they're what make life possible. The elements power your phone, your car, your home. Lithium keeps your battery alive. Silicon runs your computer. Rare earth metals move the world forward, all found in this chart. But not all elements are gentle. Some can kill, like radioactive polonium or toxic mercury. Others, like uranium, can power cities or destroy them. The table holds life and death side by side. Every element in your body was born inside a star, when a star dies, it explodes, and the building blocks of everything scatter through the universe. That means you are made of stardust. The periodic table is your cosmic birth certificate. Today, scientists are still making new elements, ones you can't find in nature. They exist for seconds before fading away. 
but each one fills a blank space on the table. Each one pushes the edge of what's possible. From science labs to school walls, the periodic table is everywhere. You see it on posters, puzzles, even pillows. It's become a symbol of knowledge, discovery and curiosity. It's science and culture. Even now, the table isn't finished. There are blank spots still waiting. What's beyond element 118? No one knows, but someone, maybe even a kid watching this, might discover what comes next. This isn't just a chart. It's the secret code of the universe. From the tiniest atom to the farthest galaxy, it all begins with the elements. The periodic table isn't just a tool. It's the story of everything. Hello and welcome. We're excited to share some great news. Our new website is officially live. You can now visit us anytime at www.migoromedia.com. This site is designed especially for students, teachers, and curious minds who want everything we've created. Documentaries, articles, references, and learning tools all in one place. So whether you're looking to revisit a topic, find further reading, or use our materials in the classroom, our website will be your go-to hub. The site is still a work in progress, so you might come across a few unfinished pages or small glitches. We appreciate your patience, and we'd love your feedback to help us make it even better. Again, that's migoromedia.com your space for engaging, well-researched learning content. Feel free to explore, bookmark it, and share it with fellow educators and learners. And thank you for being part of this journey with us.